Good morning, everybody. Why don't you stand up and start our worship together? Got some more traditional songs for you this morning, so try to switch it up every now and then. So let's sing this one together. It's an old contemporary Christian hymn or contemporary Christian song, Open the Eyes of My Heart. Open the eyes of my heart. Try it again. I think that's number six that's doing it. And open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. And I want to see you. And open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, and I want to see you. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, and I want to see you. And I want to see you. And open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. And I want to see you. See you high. See you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. And pour out your power and love as we sing, holy, 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 to see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Let's pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. And open the eyes of my heart, Lord. And open the eyes of my heart as I want to see. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. And I want to see you. See you high. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory, and pour out your power and love as we sing holy, 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 to see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory, just pour out your power and love. As we sing, holy, holy, holy. It's holy, holy, holy. It's holy, holy, holy. It's holy, holy, holy. Because I want to see. And holy, 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 and holy, 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 and holy, 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 because I want to see you, and I want to see you, and I want to see you.
Father, God, we thankfully pray to see everyone here this morning. Thank you for each individual. Father, thank you for Kim and I, uh, uh, Justin and Audrey here uh, at the church. So many of you here. Your condolences going uh, from Houston over the last week. Uh, and Father, we just pray that your stepfather would be in Cairo as well. Thank you for him and Kenneth. Uh, so thank you for your love for them. There's a lot more to be said, but during this time, uh, we are just glad to worship the Lord together. Uh, In the midst of whatever it is we're going through, uh, we are here to worship the Lord. We grieve with those who grieve, and we rejoice with those who rejoice. And so it is is wonderful and awesome to be in the presence of the Lord uh, together this morning as the body of believers. Uh, So at this time, uh, I would like to uh, read a passage, uh, one probably all of us know and are familiar with and is a great source of comfort uh, for so many of us all the time. But uh, Psalm 23, let us read it together. Psalm 23, a psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us pray. God, we thank you and give you praise uh, for your amazing kindness and love uh, displayed to us ultimately on the cross and that through Jesus we can have uh, eternal life in you. We have a hope in the resurrection uh, that our sin has been dealt with on the cross and those who trust in you, Lord, you look at uh, and see the righteousness of Christ, Lord. So I pray that, uh, Lord, we will live that out in our lives. We will proclaim that with our mouths and in all that we do. Uh, you will receive the glory, Lord. So this morning, as we gather as the church, may your name be lifted high, and may you get the glory, and may we seek to live and honor you uh, with every breath that we have, Lord. So we give you praise and thanks this morning, and may we rejoice with our whole hearts. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Blessed be your name when the land that is plentiful, where streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. And blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. And every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. And blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. And blessed be your name. The road marked with suffering, though there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. And when the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. 
blessed be your name. And blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. And blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Would you turn and greet your neighbor this morning? Welcome them here. Beautiful morning outside. Wonderful day being here. Worship. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene, and I wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean, with singing how marvelous. How wonderful and my song shall ever be, and how marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. my sorrows, he made them his very own, and he bore the burden to Calvary, and suffered and died alone, with singing high. Oh, man. 
seated. We're going to take up our offering at this time. So if our ushers come forward or anyone who would like to help pass the plate. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you so much that even though we go through ups and downs in this life, that you are constant and you are always the same. We thank you this morning uh, for a chance to give back to you. We know that giving uh, is, a, is a part of worship and a form of worship and whatever we can give um, will be put to a good purpose. We thank you so much uh, for this church and all the many activities and many outreaches that uh, we've had in this community. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Light of the world, you stepped out into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. And beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together King of all days, oh, so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. And humbly you came to the earth you created, all for love's sake became. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. I'll never know. And I'll never know how much it costs to see my sins upon that cross. And I'll never know how much it costs to see my sins upon that cross. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sins upon that cross. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sins upon Father, we thank you that we can worship you here this morning together. We thank you for that sacrifice of the cross and what it means for us that we get a gift of eternal life. Uh, we pray for Pastor Daniel as he comes this morning, that whatever message you've given him, that uh, he shares it with, uh, with us uh, in a way that we can comprehend it and understand and put it to use in our lives. We thank you so much for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you so much, Beecher. Thank you so much, praise team. What a wonderful time of worship this morning. It's always good to be at church. <clears throat> Miss Sarah Rios, will you stand up over yonder? Parents, we have what we call children's church. This is when the children will follow Miss Sarah Rios, and they are going to go downstairs to children's church. So all the children are going to stand up at this time, and follow Miss Sarah over here, and we're going to children's church if the parents are going to go to, or if the children want to go to children's church. Next Sunday, children, is promotion Sunday. That means during this worship service, we're going to honor our Sunday school teachers, and we're going to, um, uh, uh, get, if you're like in third grade, you go to fourth grade. So everybody gets promoted with that. So, and I want to tell you, if you're not, if you don't go to Sunday school, um, you know, I, I want to tell you, you, many of you say, where's the young adult class at? If I'm, if I'm like under 50, where do I go or under 60? In the gym, it's right there. So if you don't go to Sunday school, you need to be in the gym before the service starts. So that's where the young adult class meets with that. Uh, Raphael Jubin teaches that class. Glenn uh, Wyatt's uh, teaching that class. They use, it's a great class we have. And if you're under 30, you go to John and Laura's class. So that's our young adult class. And that meets downstairs in room E2 underneath the gym. So under 30, you're underneath the gym. If you're like 30 to 50 or so, you're in the gym. So, that's, so if you don't go to Sunday school and you're a young adult, uh, next Sunday is promotion Sunday. That would be a perfect time to start getting. And that's how you get to know people in a church, through your Sunday school class. So uh, I want to invite everybody, especially our young folks, to those two classes starting next Sunday. And Sunday school is at 10 o'clock, right before the service. So that's when Sunday school hour meets. Open up your Bible to the book of Acts, Acts chapter 19. I mean, I'm sorry, Acts chapter 4, verse 19. So Acts chapter 4, verses 19 through 35. This is a sermon on prayer. We're going um, to read, uh, read this story here of what happened to Peter and John and about their prayer that they prayed and how the Lord immediately answered the prayer. But before, I, before we read the scripture, I want to share four answers to prayer. I had a lady, and this lady attends our first service here, and she emailed me this week um, just some examples of how God over the years has answered prayer. Very un unexpected. And the reason why this is so important, there's a common theme with all these answers to prayer. And one of the powerful things about prayer is uh, what we're going to see in this passage here in Acts chapter 4 is there's a pattern. And that pattern, I'm going to go ahead and tell you all the answer. Notice the location. They're, they're at church. They're in the presence of other believers and they are praying directly to God, and He's the first one they turn to when they need something. You know, we live in a day, we live in a time where it's so easy to try to turn to other things and other people than going directly to the Lord. And we're going to see Peter and John, when they found themselves in a situation, that they went directly uh, to, to the Lord. But this, I'm going to read you. I got this email this week, and what's amazing about this email, now this lady, her husband has passed away. And um, she lives by herself, and she was, you know, what happens to a lot of older folks, when you, um, when you realize you're coming to the end, and you realize soon you're going to be with Jesus, you start reflecting on, on your life, and you, you think about the things uh, of, because what happens to every person, when you get a full age, you realize the things of this world and money they, they, they have less and less value because you realize your health is failing. You're soon going to be in the presence of Jesus. And the things of this world I have to offer, how little and meaningless they are. And your relationship with the Lord, and looking back over 80-something years of your life, you can see how God has just worked through all these situations to bring you to where you're at. So this lady emailed me, this week, and what's amazing about this email is um, she originally sent it a few weeks ago, but 
um, she typed up the email, and it got accidentally deleted. So, and I think that's in God's providence, because three week, four weeks ago, I probably, I wasn't preaching on prayer, I was probably at Acts chapter 1, preaching on something else, um, and it came finally, she was frustrated because she had to retype it. You know, that's so sad when you type a paper, you do something, and you didn't save it because you thought it'd make it. Then it gets deleted, the power goes out or something, and you lose everything you were working on. Well, that happened to her, so she retyped it up this week and sent it to me. So I got it, and I emailed the lady back and said, I want to use this Sunday morning. Like, these are powerful answers of prayer, of just uh, of looking at your life, because this completely ties in what I'm talking about. She said, Daniel, the Lord has touched my life in many ways. Her husband's in heaven now, and this is what she said. So these are four examples of her life of answers to prayer. One time our daughter, when she, our daughter was four years old, I had a lump in my breast, and it was very painful. Of course, we all thought it was breast cancer. Um, that week I went to Bible study, and I asked them to pray for me. And on the way home, I was driving home that night, and I told the Lord, I, Lord, I accept whatever's going to happen. I'm going to have a, a, a PET scan. It's going to, you know, very, very concerning. But Lord, I'm going to trust you. And whatever happens, um, if I have cancer and I have to go through the journey of battling breast cancer, whatever happens, I'm going to live and please you. And she said, just then I felt the warmth of the Lord's presence. I was alone in the car, and I could literally feel it was a cold day outside, and I felt this warmth of God's presence. And listen to this, immediately the pain left. And she went and had that scan done, and there was nothing there. There was no mass, there was no lump, and the said, doctor said, you're perfectly fine, there's nothing there. He, doctor, you didn't know what you're talking about. Just like that. Miraculously, the Lord removed that. A second time, I had a yeast imbalance in my digestive tract, and my daughter was diagnosed with a food allergy. My husband and I went to this Bible conference. Back in the old days, churches used to have Bible conferences, and now we have revival in October, and you don't see that a lot, Bible conferences like you used to, but this lady, they went to a Bible conference. And when they got arrived there, they were actually having a healing service. They weren't expecting that, a healing service. And she said, it was the first one I've ever even heard of. It wasn't even what I was planning on. While we were there, we asked the Lord, we asked the, during the service, we participate in the healing service. And if you ever come to church, and all of a sudden they're having a healing service, and they're inviting people to come pray for you, that's not by coincidence. That's not by accident. That's the Lord saying, hey, you've got these health conditions. Your daughter has diagnosed with this food allergy, says, the, we the, had the Lord pray, we uh, prayed to the Lord, and we came down and participated in that healing service, and I was healed of my condition, my digestive problem, and, the, and the, the, the food allergy was removed. Next time we went to the doctor, it was gone, and the no, child no longer had this food allergy. The third time here, one time I was walking down the stairs, and I fell, and I hurt my leg really bad. In fact, I couldn't even straighten it out. It was in severe pain. But that night, we went to a Bible study and prayer meeting. I mean, that's a faithful church member. Like, right? Falls down the stairs, and they still come to church on Wednesday night. And uh, my husband was leading the prayer time, and he prayed for me, specifically shared about my fall that day, and the pain I was in, and prayed for others. And as my husband was praying, I felt things moving in my knee. And after that, miraculously, I'm sitting in a chair, and it was straight, I could straighten it up. Just by just stretching out my leg, God healed my knee while he's praying, actively praying for me. It was still painful a couple of days. I had a torn muscle, but in time, I didn't need surgery, and it went away. I could walk and straighten my leg, and I directly contribute that for his prayer at that Wednesday night prayer meeting. Praise the Lord. And the fourth and final time. Another time, our young daughter had a bad, really bad cold, and I took our daughter to the, to the doctor who prescribed penicillin. Well, it turned out that she was allergic to penicillin, and I called the doctor about and told her her, system, her symptoms are getting worse, and the doctor said, just keep taking the medicine. <laughs> Not a very good doctor. Well, 
that night, we were leaving for a prayer meeting. We were in the car, and we know she was getting worse. We're going to, we're going to church. And our, doc, our daughter is in the back seat saying she felt like her throat was closing up, like I, I'm having a hard time breathing, like I'm swelling from this penicillin. I kept taking this medicine. And she didn't, I didn't know what to do. My husband and I at the church, uh, we took our daughter to the altar for prayer. While at the altar, she began to feel different. She no longer had a cold, and the swelling, all of a sudden, it went away. Her throat opened up again, and miraculously, our daughter was healed. By the time we drove home that night, she was fine. Didn't have a cold, didn't have any type of, uh, of swelling in her throat. And we no longer took the penicillin after that. We just disobeyed the doctor and quit, quit taking that. These four examples, there's a common pattern in all of these. This lady who goes to our first service, notice the first one, she's worried about having cancer. And she, at church, they pray for her. And she feels the presence of God. The second one, she's and her daughter having food allergies. They're at a Bible conference and they unexpectedly have a prayer, a healing service. They participate in it. The third one, she falls down the stairs, goes to church that night. Her husband is praying for her, and she is healed. Fourth one, she, her daughter's throat is swelling up to this medicine, an allergic reaction. And they go to the altar at church and pray for her daughter, and she's healed. In all of these examples here, this lady in our church, the Lord healed her or her family, and it was in the presence of other believers, and they were at church. They were at the altar. They were at a Bible conference. They were at a healing service, and other people were praying for them or their children or their husband. I mean, you just saw the Lord was moving in all of those examples. Now, what we're about to read about in our Bibles, we're about to read about Peter and John who prayed, and immediately they received an answer from the Lord. And we want to have a prayer life as well. That when we turn to the Lord, that we expect God to do something. We expect Him to move and answer us. Do you know, uh, I have this here in the bulletin. The book of James, chapter 5, verses 14 through 16, tells us that when we are sick, when we are struggling with health conditions, we are to go to the elders and the leaders of the church and uh, actually lay hands on them, anoint them with oil, and pray for them. It says, the prayer of a righteous man availeth much, meaning God heals through what we call intercessory prayer. That means through having other people, other believers, pray and lift up your prayer request. In fact, we have our Wednesday night prayer meeting here at our church every week. I mean, you think about it, probably 80, 90% of all the requests are about health concerns. But one of the things with health concerns, we need to think about it. When we pray for the God to heal us, because we're about to see a mention about health concerns in this passage we're going to read, we need to think about what are we asking the Lord to do? And there's actually four things that the God's going to do when we pray for someone's health. Number one, we're going to say, God, I'm asking you to heal this person or to heal me by what we call miracle alone. That means all of a sudden you fall down the stairs, your leg is hurting. You ask people, other believers, to pray for your leg and God removes the pain. You feel you have a diagnosis of cancer, God removes that cancer. So you go back in for your scan and the doctor's like, I have no idea what happened. All of a sudden, you had it on this scan. You come back in again, you're cancer-free. I can't explain it. That's a miracle alone where God miraculously heals you. So you need to think about it. There, when you pray for a healing, we pray for a miracle alone. And we see that all throughout the Bible. Another way the Lord works is He uses medicine alone. God uses medicine. We go to the doctor. God, the Lord, through doctors, gives us a medicine. You know, in our first service, we have a dentist. And I was actually talking to him after this morning, after a service, and he was telling me one of, one of his great ministries he has is he's able to pray with patients, and he's actually able to use his, the gift of being a dentist 
to minister to others, and he's even thinking about starting a nonprofit to use his gift of healing through medicine to actually bless other people because of the so much need that there is with ministering to other people. And that's the gift God uses through medicine alone. God can actually take a physician, especially a Christian physician, and bless other people through that gift that he has. Not only that, we can pray that we ask God to heal us through a miracle and medicine. It's where God is using miracle and God's using medicine to heal us. But then there's other times in our prayer life when we're praying for health concerns that we ask the Lord, when you come to the end and you say, God, make us pain-free as possible until we go to heaven. Because sometimes God chooses not to heal. And then instead of suffering and laying in pain, we pray, Lord, I don't want to sit here and just have excruciating pain. But Lord, prepare me. And then I think about David. God told King David in the Old Testament, says, you need to gather your family, you need to get your house in order, because soon you're going to be in my presence. Zach read Psalm 23. David knew what it was like to walk through a valley of the shadow of death, where all of a sudden you're in a valley and it's tough times and it's challenging and you're dealing with death and you're dealing with setbacks. And then there's other times you're not. You're in the presence of the Lord and you're dining with the Lord. He's, he's telling a story of life as through these ups and downs that we go through. But so we ask the Lord in our prayers when we pray for help. We're praying God heal by miracle, heal by medicine, heal by both miracle and medicine, or Lord, just make me pain-free as possible before I step into your presence. So we need, when we pray, we want to be very specific in our prayer life, saying, Lord, what exactly am I asking for? Our prayer life should not just be, Lord, bless the missionaries. Bless the pastors out there. Bless the people in Lexington. Like, what does that even mean? We, yes, a blessing is God's gift and His graciousness to you. Our prayer life should be so specific. Lord, I need help witnessing to my friends at school this year. School's about to start. I want to tell you our students, so here's, what, here's what's amazing. I went and graduated from high school in 1997 from Vestavia Hills High School. I had been in that school system for 12 years. 12 years. So I knew a lot of people. My graduating class had like 302 people. And what was amazing is at graduation, I'm sitting there thinking, I didn't know who that person was. You're sitting there watching, who is that? So do you know when you're in school, you're always very self-aware of what people think of you. You want to be accepted and liked. And I felt that way. You just want to be included. But do you all know, if you're a student, do you know what's going to happen this is a true miracle. I graduated on June 3rd, 1997. On June 4th, I bet I have not seen more than 30 of those 302 people. Since in, how many years ago? 35, 30 years I graduated nearly. You, you, are, you spend your entire life thinking, I just want to be accepted and included by other people. But the next day you graduate school, they all moved. Half of them moved to Atlanta, by the way. They're gone. I mean, you don't even know where do these people go. I spent my whole life wanting to be accepted and included. When they're just, they're gone. They go move away. They go off to college. They go wherever. They join the military. And it's just bam. There, the, there they go. And I think what we have to realize is when this upcoming school year, a specific prayer, or say, Lord, I'm going to go to school, I'm going to start college, I'm going to go to high school or middle school. Lord, help me be a great witness and a soul winner because I'm going to come in contact with some of my friends and I, do, I care what they think of me, but I want them to see me as a devout believer and not just somebody who's just going along to get along. So Lord, I want to pray for my lost friend, John, or Jane, or Joe. Lord, help me witness to them. Help me have the words to say to them. Help me share Jesus this year and invite them to church, to this worship service, to, to youth group, 
And Lord, put a fire inside of me so that I can see the eternal difference that it can make in people's life. Because I know, whenever I graduate from Dunbar High School, most likely I'm not going to see these people again. And if I do see them again, it's going to be like at a drive through or just passing by or walk by them at the mall and say, hey. It's, and that is a specific prayer that the Lord answers instead of saying, Lord, help me have a good day. Lord, keep me safe. We want laser-focused prayer life because you're about to see when we read this scripture, Peter and John, they prayed specifically and God answered exactly. Acts chapter 4, verse 19. Look what God's word says. Peter and John, they healed a lame man. They then preached to 2,000 people because of the healing. They found themselves arrested. What did they get arrested for? Preaching about Jesus. They, the people and the religious, they're at Solomon's Colonnade. This was last Sunday's sermon. And uh, the religious leaders, the Pharisees, they don't like this at all because they don't like Jesus. And all of a sudden, they start getting in trouble. And then they, get, they stand in front of the Sanhedrin, the same group just a few weeks earlier crucified Jesus. And they were told by this 70-member body of Jewish leaders, guys, do not talk anymore about Jesus. We're tired of hearing about him. I'm tired of seeing what's going on. I don't want to see more lame people healed. Like, it's taking away from my people. Cut it out. So that's what they are told. Do not talk about Jesus. Look at their answer. Verse 19. Peter and John answered them, whether it's right in the sight of God for us to listen to you rather than God, you decide. For we are unable to stop speaking about what we have seen and heard. After threatening them further, they released them. They found no way to punish them because the people were all giving glory to God over what had been done. For this sign of healing had been performed on a man over 40 years old. An old man was healed. He was lame. He couldn't even walk. 40 years old. And he had never taken a step in his life. And he started walking that day. So, and the people were impressed. So here's what happened. They got released. Now notice, when they get released, notice where they go. They didn't go uh, to the attorney's office and say, you know what, we're going to file a lawsuit. We were wrongly arrested. I'm a victim. I can't believe I was treated that way. That's not what they did. They went and met with the other believers. They wanted to give a testimony of what God had done. I want to tell you, these men did not think they were going to get released. Because last time Jesus was in front of the Sanhedrin, he was in front of the same group, he was crucified. Here, Peter and John, they are released because all the, they realized the crowd was out of control and they were so excited about what had happened. So they get released. And it says in verse 23, after they were released, they went to their own people and reported everything the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, look at this pattern we see. They raised their voices together to God and said, Master, you are the one who made the heaven and earth and the sea and everything in them. You said through the Holy Spirit, by the mouth of our father David, your servant, why do the Gentiles rage and the peoples plot futile things? The kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers assemble together against the Lord and against his Messiah. They recognize the spiritual warfare they're, they're, bat they're in, in battling right there. They're quoting um, the Psalms. And it goes on to say, For in fact, in this city, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, assembled together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed to do whatever your hand and your will had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, consider their threats and grant that your servants may speak your word with all boldness. Look at how specific that prayer is. Lord, these people have threatened us. But Lord, we don't want to back down. We want to be more bold. Lord, make me bold. That's going to school. That's going to work this week. That's going to find somebody who doesn't know the Lord and say, Lord, help me be a bold witness. Help me be a soul winner. Help me see what you're doing and all the needs around. Open my eyes, Lord. You know, that's one of, that's one of, that should daily be a prayer. What I just said. One of our challenges, one of the things that the devil does to us, 
He keeps us spiritually blinded. Follow me what I'm saying. Spiritually blinded, meaning we are just trying to get through our day. You're just trying to get up, get your clothes on, go to work, get off of work, find some food, and go watch the Olympics and get to bed and try, supposedly get like seven or eight hours of sleep and think it's a good day. If that's your goal, it's saying, look at me, I'm going to pat myself on the back, I went to work today, I went to school, I actually finished my homework. These are not good daily goals. And if that is your goal, that means you are spiritually blinded. Appropriate thing is, yes, Lord, I know I'm going to do that. I'm probably going to do it the next 40 years. But as I go about doing that, Lord, open up my eyes. Give me the boldness so I can look for opportunities. And remember their opportunity. They were walking up to church to time to pray at 3 in the afternoon, and they saw a lame man begging, and in the name of Jesus, they healed him through Jesus' name. And what happened is what just an everyday occurrence, the Lord worked a miracle. So one of the ways the Lord used, we, our prayer should be, Lord, open up my eyes for the opportunities that are going to come through. The people I'm going to talk to, the people I'm going to come in contact with, Lord, the unexpected things that are going to happen today and this week, Lord, help me recognize that these are outreach opportunities. At our church, every day we have people who have flat tires and their car breaks down right here. And you know where they end up? Right there. Every single day. And one day this week, I was headed, I was in a hurry, and somebody sitting there with a, with a jack and trying to fix their car, and, and the Lord said, Daniel, walk over and talk to him. And that started a spiritual conversation. And that's those unexpected things where all of a sudden, where some, something is out of place, something that doesn't normally happen, God brings these people in mind in your life for a purpose for us to be bold. And we, our prayer should be, Lord, open up my eyes so I can see what you're doing. It's not an accident that man had a flat tire right there. It's no accident that God brings you to church. These things, God is working a purpose, and we're about to see that. So they're praying for this boldness. And it says here in verse 30, while, while you stretch out your hand for healing, there it is, healing, God heals people, and signs and wonders are performed, through the name of your holy servant Jesus, someone's going to be saved, a sign or wonder is going to happen, one of the things you know is from the Lord, it will be in the name of Jesus. If it's not in the name of Jesus, it didn't come from the Lord. Because if someone's healed in the name of Jesus, that's a spiritual, godly healing. When they had prayed, look at this, the place where they were assembled was shaken. It was shaken. An earthquake occurred. God confirmed these, these men and these believers prayed to be bold in their faith. And they, they prayed this prayer, and immediately it starts rumbling. And it says they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak the Word of God boldly. God immediately answered their prayer. One of the things we see here is this shaking. There's two types of shaking today. So we see this was a physical shaking. There was like a miniature earthquake occurred with these believers. That was to confirm to them that the Lord had heard their prayer and they were going to receive an immediate answer. You think about our physical shakings today. Here's what it would be like. We deal now with cultural challenges. Cultural challenges for us would be you go to work, you go to school, and you're praying for opportunities. But you have to remember, it's the truth. When you go to these places, there's a lot of people, they do not want to hear about Jesus. They, there's a culture out there that's anti-Jesus. Anti they want nothing to do with the Lord. Because the Lord saves. The Lord brings people to repentance. The Lord is uh, uh, he, he's antithetical to the devil. So the devil who's trying to spiritually blind people, the Lord is opening up their eyes so they see and turn to the Lord. So you have to be aware that you're going to be battling that. And one of the other cultural, not only are you going to be dealing with cultural challenges, one of the other challenges today you're going to be in is what we call exalted personal identity. That means we live in a time of extreme selfishness. It, it's true. Most people... 
Most people today, especially if you're like under 60, you live in this FOMO environment, so, which means I'm gonna, I'll do that if there's nothing better else that comes along to do it. No one will make a commitment for anything because there could be something that comes along better. And it's all about what I want to do. So if I feel like it, I might come to church. If I don't feel like it, I won't go to church. Just whatever my options are. And we live in this time where we're told, you do whatever you want. Well, the problem with living that way is you aren't living for the Lord. You're not saying, Lord, I want to live, I want to please, and I want to live for you. When we live for the Lord, we're saying, God, I don't want to do my agenda today. I don't want to do the things I want to do. Lord, I want to do the things you want me to do. And you have to have spiritual eyes for looking for how the Lord is working. But if all you're thinking about is me, 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 you will be blinded to that. That's a physical shaking today that you, we are constantly battling. But knowing that, there's a spiritual shaking today. One spiritual shaking is God answers your prayer. You know, when God answers your prayer, a lot of times you're, you're taken aback. You might not have expected it. In the prayer they prayed here for boldness, they received an immediate answer. And I have learned when we have a prayer life, when we pray prayers that line up with what Scripture has already told us to do, we receive a yes. That is what God wants us to do. It's just following His Word. But not only that, the other spiritual shaking day, we have to recognize that we are living daily among spiritual warfare. God wants to destroy your, or the devil wants to destroy your life. What I mean by that is you will be, your faith will be shipwrecked, and not only that, if it doesn't get destroyed by shipwrecked faith, you will just find yourself living this life, just trying to make it in this mind, just trying to get through another day, just trying to get through another week just trying to get through another month paying bills. And the problem with that, if you're thinking that way, you're not living for the Lord. And you have to realize you have spiritual victory in Jesus. He has died on the cross. He's alive. He's resurrected. Your home's in heaven, sitting around thinking, I just hope to pay the power bill. I just hope I can make it. Say, Lord, I'm your child. I am your daughter. I am your son. Lord, you own me. I live for you. So even if I, these things don't happen, Lord, I rest in your arms. You will never let me go. That is an attitude that we have you, have, you approach things differently than with this defeated spirit. Because we, we literally are in battle daily of an adversary who wants to destroy our spiritual life. So we don't think that way, that we're thinking for ourselves. So what happens is we have to recognize there's a physical shaking, just cultural challenges today that we're dealing with. And then there's a spiritual shaking all around us that we're among spiritual warfare, but God wants to answer our prayer. Last thing we see here in our Bible <clears throat> is when we see answers to prayer. The goal of this message is I want to show to you that these men had a laser-focused prayer life, specific they prayed for boldness. They asked, say, what do you mean we prayed for boldness? Look at this. It says here, um, in verse, it said in verse 29, and now, Lord, consider their threats. They received a threat. That was, their, that was the physical shaking. They, they, have, they have a governmental leaders who do not support what Peter and John are talking about. We might be dealing with that as well. And then they say, Lord, grant that your servants may speak your word with all boldness. That's verse 29. By verse 39, two Bible verses later. Verse 29, they're praying for boldness. Verse 31, it says they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and spoke the word of God boldly. Two verses later, the Lord has already answered the prayer. That is what a prayer life, that when we go to the Lord and we pray, and we have a specific agenda, He answers those prayers. And I guess what the Lord is wanting us to know is recognizing that our prayer life 
should be laser focused so you can journal it and send me an email that looks like this and says, Daniel, here is exactly what happened. How I was in this type of knee pain after falling down the stairs. I went to the altar. I asked people to lay hands on me. I wasn't expecting to go to the altar. I went to this unexpected Bible conference, shows up, and, and then I have a healing conference of all things. Never even been to one. And I felt, Lord, it was you, you had aligned this for me to do. And the Lord healed my pain. It's gone. Just like that. That is what having spiritual eyes of recognizing what God is doing. So what happens? God answers prayers in four ways. Number one, he gives us a yes. And that's usually, if you notice in your prayer life, you will actually pray that wanting a yes answer. You will phrase your prayer so that it's easy for God to say yes. When I send, I have teenagers, when I send them text message, including Sherry too, and I want to an answer. You know the best way to get an answer to any text message? I phrase all my questions as yes or no questions. I make it so that you can say yes or no. Why or in? That's all you have to do. Because if you ask an open-ended question, you don't get a reply because people don't want to type sentences. They want yes or no questions. So all my questions I ask people are just yes or no. And it really, I try to phrase it so I get to a yes. Well, we do that also. And that's actually, if you want, if you want, if you, if you ever notice, like, why aren't people answering my text messages? Keep it short. Make it yes or no questions, and your answer rate will go through the roof if you start doing that. Yes or no answers is how you get people to respond. So what happens for our prayer life? We will actually take the way we text people and think we can talk to God that way. And we have to be careful about doing that because that's not, the Lord doesn't answer how we want Him to answer. There are yes answers He gives us. He answered this prayer for boldness because he wanted his son Jesus proclaimed. He wanted these people to be filled with the Holy Spirit so more people can get saved. But a lot of times, we don't always receive a yes answer. A lot of times God tells us no. One of the most amazing no answers in Scripture is actually on Paul's third missionary journey in Acts chapter 16, verse 6. Paul was in a current day Turkey. And he wanted to go north into northern Turkey, which was a real remote and rural area. And he said he had a vision at night where the Lord says, you're forbidden to go there. You're not allowed to go into northern Turkey. And then that same vision, all of a sudden, he has this picture of Greece, of Macedonia. That's where Macedonia is next to Greece. It's across the Aegean Sea. And this man was calling them in this vision to come bring the gospel. So what happened, and this is... This is actually in many ways how Christianity spread to the west. So instead of Paul going up north and to the east, he went west, and the gospel, it went into Europe at that point. That's how Christianity spread to Europe. It's called the Macedonian call. But what, notice what happened. God closed this window. Paul felt he was going north and east. And God says, no, you're forbidden to go there. In fact, you're going to go over here to Macedonia. You're going to go towards Greece and take the good news. And what's amazing about that story is we never know why God closed northern Turkey off and why he closed the north and the east. We have no idea. God, the Bible doesn't tell us. We can only speculate. All we know is God said, no, you're not going there. Yes, you're going over there. And Paul said, yes, sir, Lord, let's head to Macedonia. That's how he responds. God says no here, yes there, and we follow the Lord. And we have to trust the Lord instead of sitting around thinking about and overanalyzing all the time, why, Lord, why, why, why? We will never know sometimes until heaven why God says no. Third answer, and this is what struggles with us. Third answers we get meantime, God says not now, wait. And the answer will come later. And when we're in that time, we just continue doing and continue praying. And a lot of times, if you have family members, or if you have friends who are not saved, or you have kids or grandkids who do not know Jesus, and you're praying week after week after week. I mean, I, this week, I was talking to a grandmother at our church who has a son who's in his 30s, who has a drinking problem, and is in total rebellion against the Lord. And she is on her knees, grandma's on her knees, praying for her grandson to get saved. She's broken over him. She's asking me to pray for him. In fact, I prayed with him over that. He needs the Lord. That's 
all his other problems. You can diagnose this or that, but when it comes down to it, he needs Jesus. That's what his ultimate problem is of all these other issues he's dealing with. And what happens is she's she's not seeing a lot of progress. She's seeing no progress. In fact, it's getting worse. It's not getting better. And all she knows to do is to keep going to the Lord. So a lot of times what happens, think about when you got saved, when you got baptized, when you started coming to church. I bet you had a grandma on her knees somewhere, might have been in another state, praying for you. Someone's inter- being an intercessory prayer for you to respond to the Lord. And a lot of times those answers, this lady's getting is not now, not now, not now. And she just, she doesn't know. All she knows to do is pray for her grandson. And the fourth answer we get, and a lot of times it's very common, is silence. And the answer of silence is where we continually seek Him. And it's okay for us to say, I don't know. Lord, I don't know what's going to happen. All I know is I'm not hearing a response. I know, it's not a yes, it's not a no, it's not a not now. Lord, I just continue coming to you. So what happens? Tying all this together with our prayer life. We look here at Peter and John. They had a specific prayer. They prayed for boldness. They prayed that they would be filled with the Holy Spirit. And God answered that prayer. I want to encourage you this morning that if you want to start seeing, we're, school's about to start, the church is about to get very busy, you're about to have a lot of outreach and evangelism opportunities, this is a time where you can begin to be a great positive influence, a great witness on people who do not know the Lord. Listen, if grandma, 80-year-old grandma's on her knees praying for her grandson, asking her pastor to pray for her grandson, think about the people in your life whom you can be praying that they will repent and turn to Jesus. Every time someone gets saved, every time someone gets baptized, there's a legion of people behind that event that were being intercessory prayers for them. They were praying for the preacher. They were praying praying for them to respond. They were praying for them to be bold in faith. And we trust the Lord with the results. It's on His timing. And many of us, need to just change our prayer life and say, Lord, I want to be like Peter and John, where I have spiritual eyes that are open, recognizing what you are doing, instead of just saying, great, another day, I'm just trying to get through it. Be trying to invite you in the band. Y'all come on down now. We're going to respond to the Lord. If you are here, and you have never accepted Jesus as your Savior, you have had someone praying for your salvation. You've had someone back home, even when you were a child, that you would be a disciple. The Lord, His will is for us to repent and to turn to Him. But we have to have spiritual eyes that we ask the Lord to open up our eyes so we can see what He's doing. We are, many times, including myself, we are blinded to what the Lord is doing because we are living in the routine and the mundane things of just everyday life. And we pray, God, give me a boldness so I can respond and so I can recognize what you're doing. If you want to get, make a decision to follow Jesus, if you want to get saved, one of the best prayers I ever pray is a sinner's prayer. We pray and we confess and admit to the Lord that we're a sinner and we cry out to Him. So I'm going to invite everyone to stand up. Zach Bauer and I stand down front. If you want to give your life to Jesus this morning, this is also a time you can join our wonderful church. We respond to God by joining being part of a church family. You make Broadway your church home. You come walk this aisle, take my hand, take Zach's hand, and said, I'm ready to respond boldly to the Lord this morning. The marvelous grace of the loving Lord, grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt, yonder on Calvary's mount abhorred, there where the blood of the Lamb was spilled. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. 
dark is the stain that we cannot hide. What can avail to wash it away? Look, there is flowing a crimson tide. Whiter than snow you could be today. In grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sins. In grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, Grace that is greater than all our sins. Thank you for worshiping with us uh, today. Please remain standing. Uh, just a quick announcement. Hopefully you received a bulletin. Uh, tonight we have our service. I believe Raphael Jumbin is preaching uh, tonight in our evening service. And next Sunday evening at 5 o'clock we have our church picnic at Masterson Station Park. So, um, I believe we, oh, we're providing all the, the meat, the main uh, dish for that as well. And, and so uh, if you're coming to that, we ask you bring a side dish or a dessert uh, for that next Sunday, uh, 5 p.m. at Masterson Station Park. Um, and on Wednesday, the 14th, we'll resume our Wednesday night meals. Uh, we do have Wednesday night services uh, this upcoming Wednesday. Let us go to the Lord in prayer as we dismiss. Father, we give you praise and thanks uh, for your kindness and goodness to us, Lord. Lord, I pray that... Uh, we will be a people in a church that seeks after your face at all times and circumstances of people who will be bold in coming to your throne, Lord. Uh, Lord, knowing that you intercede for us, that Christ sits at the right hand of the Father, praying for us, Lord. So uh, may we go to your throne, Lord, knowing you are good and kind and you delight uh, in hearing us and our, our prayers and our cries to you, Lord. So we pray that you strengthen us this week. Help us to walk boldly and humbly and it will lift up and magnify your name in all that we do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. In grace that is great.